All right, so today we're going to talk a little bit about observations versus inferences. Both of these are very common in science, and it's important that you know the difference between the two of them so that you know when to make observations and when it's important to make inferences. We're going to start with just a little bit of uh, vocabulary to get you started. So to start with, observations. An observation is the gathering of information by using our five senses. For a little refresher, our five senses are, of course, sight, smell, hearing, taste, and touch. If you happen to believe in a sixth sense, uh, we should probably talk after, after class. I see dead people. There are two types of observations that you can actually make using those senses. There are what are called qualitative observations, and there are quantitative observations. You need to be able to do both of those things in order to be very good at observing qualitative observations. That's when you can describe what you're observing. It comes from the word quality. Quality is a descriptive way of, of talking about something. We're going to use adjectives. Now, it's one thing to say uh, the ball is blue, and another thing to say the ball is a teal. Teal is a little bit more specific than blue. Okay, so some qualitative observations, an example, that zebra is white with black stripes. Just describes using adjectives what you see. Uh, Mr. Pantano is very tall. I am, as a matter of fact, very tall. Quantitative observations come from the word quantity, which means number. Okay, so quantitative observations are going to use numbers to describe what we observe. Uh, I can say, for example, there are seven ninja in the shadow. Seven, that's a number that describes a count. Right, counting something. Or Mr. Pantano is 1.93 meters tall. That's an odd way of reporting height in the United States. How tall am I according to the way we would say it in the United States? See if you can figure that one out. The reason that we would use quantitative versus qualitative observations has to do with a couple of, of very important concepts in science. The first is, if we want to compare observations it's easier to compare observations that have a number attached to them than that are just descriptors. And second of all, sometimes your senses just aren't that good. If you want to measure or observe uh, radio waves, you can't see radio waves. You can't hear radio waves unless they're converted into sound, right? So if you want to measure radio waves, there has to be an instrument, there has to be a way of quantifying that measurement. So which is more valuable, qualitative or quantitative? Most students say, oh, the numbers. We want to see the numbers. Well, in fact, they're both valuable, and they're both absolutely important in your experimental work. If you want to compare measurements and you don't want to be biased, then you use quantitative measurements. But if you really want to describe what's going on so that people can understand what it is you're observing, um, you really want to use qualitative. So here's an example of comparing. If I say the dog is big, well, compared to what? The dog is big compared to a mouse? Sure. Compared to a car, that would be a scary dog. Uh, but if I say the dog weighs 250 pounds, that's huge compared to us. But at least that number gives me a good comparison. The dog weighs 250 pounds. I now have an idea of how big that dog is. If you ever see a 250 pound dog, run. Sometimes you can't quantify a measurement. Sometimes uh, there, there is no measurement. There's no number to go with it. And sometimes scientists, when they're faced with that, they'll develop a scale. For example, the Mohs scale, uh, which is a way of describing how resistant materials are to be scratched, uh, material hardness. Or the Scoville scale, if you ever go out to a Quaker Steak and Lube and you get their like fiery, fiery hot wings, um, it's not a pleasant situation. But they measure how hot those things are using something called the Scoville scale. If you want to know more about Mohs or Scoville, you should probably do a little research on those and you can sort of see where they came from. But there are numerical scales for something that is generally hard to, to quantify. Inferences, on the other hand, involve an explanation. They explain the observations that you've made. They're based on your experiences, prior knowledge, anything that you've had. In other words, it's kind of an educated guess as to why what you're observing is going on. If you make new observations that conflict with those inferences, you're going to change your inferences. They're not the same as observations, and I don't want you to confuse the two when you're taking collecting data. When you collect data in a laboratory, that's only observations. That is never an inference. 
You can use inferences when you're doing your lab report uh, in your conclusions section. Infer inferring what's going on in a lab is very important. It's a, an important part of the whole process. So here's some examples that we can talk about. Here's the first. An observation. You make an observation that the grass on the school's front lawn is wet. So what are some possible inferences we can make from that? In other words, explain why is it wet? Well, maybe it rained. Sure. Okay. Maybe the sprinkler was on. Great. That would explain why uh, the grass was wet. Maybe there's dew on the grass in the morning, you know, especially in the spring and fall. We get that after a cold night. Or maybe a dog urinated on the grass. Ew. But possible, right? All of these things are based on prior experiences, things that you know already. Those are inferences, okay? Here's another one. The school fire alarm is going off. Possible inference from that. The school's on fire. Let's hope not. We're having a fire drill, more likely. A student pulled the fire alarm. You all know who it is. Come on. You know who it is. Again, logical explanations based on prior knowledge. How about this one? A student is sitting in the main office. What are some inferences you could make from that? Why might the student be sitting there? Take a minute. Think about a few. We'll talk about them in class within the next couple of days. Don't forget to do your whisk for this assignment. If you don't remember what a whisk is, go back and watch the whisk video. And we'll see you later.